happy mommy pro weekend today is friday and it's almost 11 o'clock i was getting ready as you can see by this amazing majestic appearance i have um and then as i was hairspraying my hair i realized i left you guys completely hanging in my previous weekend vlog where i was like i found i found the hairspray that was created by newborn baby unicorn tears. I'm sorry, you guys. This whole time I've been enjoying the use of this majestic hairspray and I've just, I've kept this information to myself. So as I was waving my hair, I thought, now's probably a great opportunity for me to be like, hey guys, this is the hairspray. All right, enough of that. So this is the hairspray, you guys. Um, it's from Dove. It's a compressed micro mist. Um, perfect for those of you with two and a half baby hairs, those of you that, your hair's resentful, doesn't accept new product, gets heavy, weighted down, greasy, loses its wave. I mean, this hairspray is pretty magical. It is a super, 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 super awesome hold. However, it's not hard. So it's almost like a bunch of little tiny miniature, minuscule, microscopic baby hands come out of this hold your style, but don't make it crunchy at all. So you probably don't believe me right now because of the current state of my hair, but trust a girl. Um, it smells kind of nice. Like it smells where you're either going to love it or hate it, um, but it doesn't linger. It is a compressed micro mist, so you have to shake it really, really, really well and push hard enough where it actually comes out. You'll notice the difference because it is a compressed can. You'll notice when just air is coming out. So you have to press firm enough where you actually hear and see the spray come out. So that was just air. That was hairspray. Did you see the difference? Air, hairspray, do you see? So when you just ge gently, I just got hairspray all over my camera. Who's getting the bill? Okay, um, so air, nothing. You just hear pss, hairspray, you see it. So I'm also gonna show you guys a really, 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 really quick way that I wave my hair. Um, this is not a tutorial. I don't do hair tutorials. I think I've done like maybe two hair tutorials in my entire career um, because I'm not good at them and I get nervous and burn myself. But if your hair is currently my length and you like that, I didn't try so hard. My hair just looks like that look. I'm going to show you guys the way that I do the waves. And it's actually super easy because, like I said, I know nothing about hair except that I only have two and a half. And it makes me very salty in life. So uh, do you guys want to see how I do it? Okay, let's go. All right, you guys. So I leave the bottom part completely alone. I don't do anything with it. I basically start halfway down and then start waving. So I'm gonna move down. And sorry if I don't make eye contact because I'm trying to look at myself in the mirror without like burning my face. Um, and I do it off in sections. Um, so I do like one hair at a time. <laughs> don't look at my bra, Cochina, as I saw you. So I just gently pick out the hair that hasn't been waved. And because this is a very effortless look, it doesn't have to be exact. If you re-wave or miss hair, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, I usually grab a little more hair than this, but for purposes of this tutorial and pretend like I know what I'm actually doing, this is what we're gonna do. My wand is an inch and a half. It's super old. It's from Numi when Numi used to actually be at the mall. And I just did a turn and a half, and you can see how much of the hair is actually sticking out, and I'm holding it out straight. I'm not going to wrap the ends because then it gives me Shirley Temple curls and I look absolutely ridiculous. Um, and then I loosen, hold onto the tip, and let go. So you're gonna have that like curl and then whoop, that sticks out. I'll show you guys again on this side. I think I might have a little more hair on this side because I actually might know a little bit of what I'm doing. I, I really don't. Um, I'm already running behind my day, that's pretty huge. Um, so again, section of hair, see this is a little bit bigger. Wand, point it down, behind, wrap once, wrap twice, stick out. Angle your wand, do you see the angle that I have? You don't wanna do up and down, you wanna do straight. So you're kind of pulling out your hair at, your, at an angle. Your hair isn't wrapped cylindrically like a coin. Do you know what I'm saying? So there is no circle wrap around the hair, it's all on an angle, it's all stretched out, there's no, do you see that? So as opposed to your hair having a full circle, like a circle around the wand, oh God, this is, this is turning really awkward. Um, it's, it's wrapped around, curved on a slope. 
So it's wrapped in a wave as opposed to a curl. There is no um, coil. So I think there's some back here that I need to do something with. Let's see. We'll grab a little bit off the back. So do you see how wide this section is? I'm gonna take this into two. Bring this one forward. Bring this one over to the side. I'll do it one more time. Wave, wrap, pull. It's not at my root. It's about an inch away from my root. I have about an inch or two straight out of the edge and it's on an angle. It's not in a coil, it's on an angle. So you wanna create a wave, not a curl. So always on an angle. Do you see how the hair is pulled taut, but it's on an angle? I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep repeating that because I feel like if I say it more times then it just makes better sense. Do you see that? Wave, not a curl, it's a wave. Um, I'll show you with this little section that we parted off over here. I don't think I've ever seen anyone talk about this. Like when they do their hair tutorials, they're like, okay, just put your wand and curl it. And I'm like, no, you don't curl it. There's no curl, it's a wave. So you wanna make sure that you wrap your hair accordingly against the wand. Because if you wrap it perfectly around the wand, you're gonna get a curl, you're gonna get a circle, you're gonna get a coil. And what you're getting is a, is a wave, you want a wave. So you wanna make sure you hold your hair taut, you hold your wand on an angle, you pull your hair on an angle, and then you get a wave, not a curl, all right? So we're gonna do the rest in fast forward motion because that's what cool people that do tutorials do. Um, and then you guys will see the final product. So here, I go down in one section like that. Then I go down the other section like that. And then I go down the middle like that. And then we'll clip this up again. And usually, you guys, if you have two and a half hairs like I do, um, don't have your hair tight in a clip longer than you need to. So usually, I'm not talking to a camera and instructing people how to wave their hair. I, um, I'm doing it quickly. It's literally all that I'm doing. Um, when I get to the back, I want more volume. So, wow, I'm glad I kept talking. Um, so for here, I am doing, do you see the circle, the coil? the wraparound, I'm still doing the edge at the end where I stick it out so that it kind of has a straight edge, but I am wrapping it because when you do a tighter, tighter curl, you get more volume, but that's on the back, so you want that in the back, not in the front. You see the difference? And you see all that volume right there? That's what you want. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, you don't want your hair tight especially if you have two and a half hairs like I do because it could create a crease or a crimp that lasts all day and you don't want that. So you wanna work as fast as you can so that you don't crimp your hair. If you have thick, luscious hair that cooperates and you don't have to wash every day, I hate you, side note. Uh, <laughs> but also, um, you don't know what I'm talking about. But if you have two and a half baby hairs like I do, if you put your hair in a clip like this for too long, it ruins basically the rest of your day. So we're just gonna finish this up here. I need to stop talking and I need to keep going before I burn myself. So just stay tuned and uh, enjoy the fast forward action. Right, Wesley? You can't see him, but he's down there. enough hairspray to save a small country so we're gonna just leave it alone um, and kind of let it cool you want to let the curls cool you want to let your hair chill out and relax from all the waving and handling and brushing and stroking and moving in the front direction all that stuff you want to just let your hair chill out for a second this is a perfect opportunity for you to catch up on dishes empty the washer finish your makeup put on your lipstick wash your engagement ring because I'm engaged in my tan is fading and I don't want to talk about it um, and just leave it alone. And then I don't like to brush it with a hairbrush when I'm done. I like to just run my fingers through it and kind of distract from all the chunkiness so you could see where it's been 
chunked or separated into chunks um, and I like to just diffuse that um, but other than that I don't take a brush and brush through it I just leave it alone but I don't know if you guys could see in the fast forward footage how you really have to play with this bottle it's an amazing product but because it's something a little different than we're used to the compressed air um, it has a little bit of a learning curve you want to be educated on the product so that you're not oh yeah hair spraying my hair and then your style doesn't last because all you did was spray air into it so make sure that you're cognizant of that. I'm gonna let my hair chill out for a second. When I'm ready to brush it out, I'll come back to you and I'll show you how I do it. Hey you guys, welcome back to Danny's Ratchet Salon. After a brief uh, outfit change and uh, lip color application, I'm wearing Urban Decay's Hitchhike topped with um, Fenty Beauty uh, Gloss Balm in the original, the only flavor. <laughs> it's uh, Fenty Glow. I feel like I shrank. What, what happened? Why do I look so far away? Okay, so this is my hair. Do you see how it kind of fell a little bit? So this tutorial, this amazing high quality, um, like hair school professional tutorial is only for those of you that can sympathize with me, two and a half hairs, crazy texture, super greasy crown, super dry ends, then this tutorial is for you. This is the stuff that has worked for me. Um, but to, again, you have to keep in mind, I wash my hair every day. I've tried the whole don't wash it um, for days and then it'll stop being greasy. It doesn't work. It doesn't work for everyone. I think it's a total myth. So if you've tried it too and you failed, it's not you. <laughs> It's our hair. So um, my tip is my hair gets progressively greasy throughout the day and when that happens, it A, clumps together and falls flat. So one way that I avoid that and I can have the same awesome hairstyle all day long, I mean, I'm talking like a 16, 18 hour day, is with dry shampoo. I just grabbed the first one that I could find. Um, Amika's one of my favorites. I also like Batiste um, and Dry Bar. Dry Bar is my holy grail, but it's gone all expensive. So, um, I just take a little bit of dry shampoo. Keep in mind our hair is still crunchy from the hairspray. And I mean crunchy loosely because you can see how easily I'm parting my hair and it's not, it's not hard to part. Watch, I'm not even gonna pull it. See, it's not, it's, you guys, it's hairspray. It's hairspray so good. So I just take a little bit of dry shampoo into my root area where my hair gets the most greasy and I kind of just zhuzh it up. And so what happens is it's like ready and waiting in the wings so that, again, when my hair betrays my love and starts getting greasy and sends out all the oil monsters out, it's already there waiting and like, psh, grabs them, just psh, traps them, psh, dries them up, soaks them up, you know? That sounded so gross. Anyway, so all I do is I massage in the dry shampoo, which is also kind of loosening the curls, and then I run my fingers through the shafts heat wishes um and then just kind of brush it out like this and then go on with my day that's how I get my waves do you see it's really not that hard because it's supposed to look like your hair is low maintenance which it really is you guys we we did nothing we literally did nothing with the hair back here nothing we left it alone I just blow dried it like that's it but to get to this, all I did was wave from here up. That's it. And you saw how, how we wave, not curl. We wave the hair so that we get that. I call this like the Kim Kardashian swoop, this. I feel like she's mastered it. Now, I'm not a fan of that, of the whole situation. Just, I have my opinion. I'm not a fan, but I do love that the hair always looks amazing. So you're welcome for this, uh, installment of Danny's Ratchet Salon. I hope you guys were able to learn something. I know there's a very small community of us that have uh, two and a half baby hairs that like to betray our love, our confidence, um, our whole look, and it's hard to find products that are gonna work for us. So um, I don't know why I'm so out of breath. I think it's because I'm feeling a little sassy today and I've just been running around, um, but I'm gonna put on my big earrings now in front of you guys because I mean, I'm not just wearing a white t-shirt today, you know? Like, I'm not wearing all this makeup just to wear a white t-shirt. I want, um, I want some earrings to match, to match the vibe I'm going for. So when people are like, whoa, where'd you get your hair done? At the salon? I'm like, mm -hmm. that's right. Danny's Ratchet Salon, where we learn all the professional tricks of the trade. How many of you guys think I'm serious? 
How many of you guys are new to Coffee Break with Danny and think I'm just the biggest hole right now? <laughs> we don't take ourselves too seriously here, in real life, in person, at night, in the morning, during stressful times, during sad times. Literally never do we take ourselves seriously. I'm standing on my tippy toes right now because apparently I didn't set up my tripod at my height. So um, we never take ourselves too seriously and you shouldn't either. Have some grace with yourself, forgive yourself, and guess what? It's life, tomorrow's gonna start all over. So if you're having a bad day today, tomorrow might be better. Or hey, you know what, it might be worse. But it's all your perspective, it's all your state of mind. If you guys knew all the that's going on right now, but you know what? I wanted to show you guys how I wave my hair, so that's taken front row, and y'all are getting the full, full experience of Danny's Ratchet Salon. So, um, I have to go get started with my day. It is now 11.30. We wasted another 30 minutes um, enjoying ourselves, which is kind of nice. I'm basically like this in the entire vlog. <laughs> It's 12.30, I just got done filming one of the most exciting videos in my entire influencing career. You guys, it's been like six or seven years already. I lost track of time. Actually, let me tell you exactly how long it's been. I have a little countdown app. It also counts backwards. Um, and so we have been doing YouTube for seven years. <laughs> wow! Um, this is one of my favorite opportunities, one of my favorite projects that I've ever done. And I could finally let the cat out of the bag officially because when you see this vlog, the collection will have gone live the day before, maybe. So um, I'm doing what is called the local look. That is a curated closet for JCPenney. What they're doing is they're going to big cities. They're picking a like a local influencer and we're styling a closet for you guys. Um, I was able to go to JCPenney, no one was there, all the new arrivals were laid out, and I had to just come up with outfits. Y'all, it's like they turned me loose in like a pet store. It was crazy, I was like, ah, squirrel, like squirreliness out of control. Like I, I just, I didn't know where to look, I didn't know what to pick. It was so overwhelming, but like in a good way. Um, I designed 13 or 14 different outfits for you guys. The pieces are super comfortable, super high quality, multi-purpose. They don't just go with one thing, like these earrings or this white t-shirt. Um, they are universally loving, um, they're inclusive. So whether you love or hate palazzo pants, where you, whether you love or hate the animal print trend, whether you love or hate white tees, there is something for everyone here. And I love the fact that JCPenney has um, such a wide range of sizes. So it doesn't matter if you're a size double zero or a 14 or a 4XL or whatever size you are, we're gonna be able to share the same pieces. Um, a lot of these shoes that I picked also come in wide or wide calf. Like it's nuts, you guys, it's absolutely insanity. I have to go sit down and edit this video, but for now, we're gonna take a little bit of a break. Um, well, from vlogging, um, because I have to go work. Um, as much as I'd like to put my camera up and be like, hey guys, go live, let's have some fun. <sighs> Someone's gotta pay the bills, you guys. And this is my Patreon link, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey guys, I have no idea what time it is. I just picked up my camera and I was like, hey, I wanna check in with you guys. So there was a change of plans. My makeup looks a little ratchet. I can't stop saying that word today for some reason. Um, you wanna say hello? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Um, okay, this day has been so weird, like super bonkers. Um, the plan was I was gonna work all day. It's a Friday. Parker was gonna come home with bonus baby junior. We were gonna have dinner together with Sophie LaRue and um, then we were gonna go to Bonus Baby Senior's first football game because she's in band. For some reason, um, Parker picked up Bonus Baby Junior late, so they got here late um, and just had time to change and go back. Um, here's the thing. Do you guys ever feel like you get out, like left out of the loop on certain things? Um, that kind of happened today. So that's why I'm sitting at home by myself now. 
Long story short, I'm kind of bummed out because I was really looking forward to going to the first game. You know, they always make such a big deal and I wanted to see her in her uniform and <sighs> anyway, blended family problems, am I right? So right now, I wish I could tell you what time it is, I have no idea. But I'm starving, I haven't had breakfast, lunch, or dinner, so I'm gonna head out the door and see what I can get myself into. I kinda want in and out it's kinda far. Maybe I'll settle for Burger King. <laughs> um, but I did get a special delivery. So Parker and I, uh, rather, I have an addiction. <laughs> this is an intervention for myself. I have an addiction where I like to watch the Home Shopping Network in the middle of the night and then I end up you know, bringing home like a spice rack or a collapsible colander collection. Some of my favorite best finds that I've ever discovered have been late night shopping. Now, what's ended up happening now is Parker and I will late night social media browse and we succumb to the temptation of, yes, that's a zit on my chin, y'all, hormones. What I was telling you is now we do the late night social media browsing and we decided to try a wine subscription. <laughs> okay, let me just explain to you how it happened. So it, it was like an ad on my Instagram and the brand is called Wink. Uh, this is the very first time we try it. It's not sponsored by the way. Um, and so the ad came out. Oh, I got a text. I wonder who it's from. Um, and so, wait, I have my phone because I just heard it vibrate. Oh, here it is. I can tell you what time it is. Hold on a second. Okay, it's like 6.15. Anyway, so um, we got an ad on Instagram and I was like, hey, don't you wish we were wine people? And he was like, ugh, I so wish we were wine people because we're like whiskey, bourbon, beer, right? But you, you know, you watch TV and movies and stuff and people get home from work and they're like, I want a glass of wine with dinner and it's totally normal, it's not faux pas. So I was like, I wanna be one of those like couples that has like a wine bottle on the counter and that's like their wine for the week. For, for the night, depending on how stressful the day was. But he and I know nothing about wine. Like you give me a bottle of wine and I'm gonna cook with it. I'm gonna do um, a braise with it or a risotto with it, but I'm not gonna be like, oh yeah, this has like notes of apple and hibiscus and honeydew on a fall winter's day. I can't, I can't, <laughs> I don't know how to do that. So it would be nice to discover wine and not you know, be a non-connoisseur about it. Anyway, the whole point of the story is to say that we late night subscribe to Wink. <laughs> and we got our first delivery today and I was gonna wait for Parker to open it, but because I'm feeling a little salty about this football game, I'm just gonna open it with you guys. Well, not the wine, just, just the box. Y'all, I'm not a savage, o only sometimes. So I think the only inconvenient thing about this is that I had to be home to sign for it and you also have to be over 21 to be able to sign for it. I don't remember what wine we're getting. Um, I just remember it was two whites and two reds. So <laughs> here it is, oh, Folly, Foley, how do you say that? Foley, Folly of the Beast, Pinot Noir. That sounds strong. This is a, oh, oh, what's happening here? Dang, look at how freaking amazing they arrive. This is Chop Shop Cabernet. I used to love Cab, actually. When I, when I used to pretend to drink wine, it was either Cab or Syrah that I loved. Um, this is, oh, look how pretty! Coco Mero, what is this, like watermelon flavor? <laughs> is there watermelon wine? <laughs> I'm gonna have to open this later with or without my fiance. And then this is Outer Sounds um, Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. Seriously, you guys, what's the other bottle? How do I, <laughs> how do I figure it out? Where are my wine connoisseurs? Let's see. Um, this is from California. Oh, it's a rosé. Hey, girl. Maybe I should put this in the fridge. That way when I get home from figuring out what I'm going to feed myself, I could have some. Can you, can you save these kinds of wines? You guys are going to have to tell me. Seriously, you guys are going to have to teach me your ways. Um, I need to know, like, the basics. If it's a screw top, can I re-screw it and put it in the fridge? How long will it last? When is it perishable? Um, can I put it in the fridge and then out of the fridge? Like, what do you do with wine? I know the whole glass thing. I know which glasses to use for what colored wines and how to hold the glass. I know all of that, like, etiquette stuff. Oh, there's a hair. 
on my face. Yeah, so I know, I know the etiquette portion of it, like how to open a bottle, how to pour it, what glass to use, but when it comes to preservation or flavor or how to drink it, <laughs> that's not my forte. So if you guys are wine lovers, you're gonna have to teach me, but I hope at some point Parker and I can dive into this uh, box because I really need to make rational sense of why we thought this was a good idea at 11.30 p.m. when browsing through Instagram. Although, I do have to say, if you wanna to get to know your partner um, on a really weird and different level, scroll through their Instagram together. <laughs> So like we'll sit there at night when there's no the family Chantel or 90 day fiance on um, We'll sit there and then I'll scroll through my Instagram and he looks over my shoulder and then he'll scroll through his and I'll look over his shoulder and we're like, okay, or uh, or Really? Um, and then you just really get to know them on a very superficial non deep non Meaningful level just it's it's kind of interesting <laughs> you may end up subscribing to this wine subscription. Anyway, we're actually testing it out, see if we even like it. It's one of those things where it's no commitment. I think that's how we rationalized getting it because we were like, well, it's a uh, month to month. We can cancel any time. Might be a good deal for the both of us. <laughs> All right, you guys. So it is wet out there. It is moist. It is humid. Sophia is here with me. Um, seven o'clock. I went to Zoe's kitchen. I'm gonna show you guys what I got for dinner. But before that, I need you to allow me to express myself just for maybe like eight minutes. <laughs> I was gonna say a second, but just y'all know how I'll work. So I probably should put my camera down because I need, I'm gonna need to use my hands to talk so I could do like a live demo and kind of like a reenactment for you guys. All right, so I'm risking my camera's life by putting it on the edge of a slippery chair. That's also on top of a table. Um, I went to Zoe's, just getting my chicken and my hummus, like no big deal. Walking out the door, so happy with my little bag of food. And uh, this guy was like, good evening, ma'am. And I was like, I love getting called ma'am now. When I first moved to Texas, I was like, F you. <laughs> and now I'm like, you better call me ma'am. Um, and so he's like, good evening, ma'am. I was like, all right, cool. He, like, he was holding the door open for me. Um, and uh, he was like, oh, busy plans tonight? And I was like, no, I'm just going home to enjoy my food. He said something really swift and like smooth, like, well, you wouldn't have to enjoy it by yourself if I gave you my phone number, if you gave me your phone number. And I was like, oh, that's really sweet of you, but I'm engaged. Um, I always think the whole like, ah, being polite instead of like shoving someone off is nice, you know, like if, if someone were to reject me, I'd want them to do it in a nice way, not in a mean or standoffish kind of way. So it's like, oh, that's really sweet of you, but I'm engaged, you know, like, Ugh. and um, he literally looks at me and says, well, that's perfect, because I've arrived just on time to save you. Now, okay, <laughs> first of all, no one needs to save me. I don't need saving. Um, I don't need saving from life, from myself, from my finances, from a man. I don't need any kind of saving. I'm exactly where I need to be because I choose to be here. Second of all, if someone's telling you they're engaged, it is a clear understanding that this person's life is made up. So know your place. Um, and third of all, it's kind of disrespectful to his own kind to be that blatantly aggressive. Um, and lastly, what if I had pepper spray? Or what if Parker was like in the car waiting for me to get the food? You know what I mean? But this is my problem because I'm naive and I overshare. So the fact that I was like, oh, I'm gonna go home and enjoy my food, it was like, I opened the door. So girls, girls, women, ladies, men, whatever, be cognizant of not um, how you communicate as much as what you communicate because um, you could put yourself in a situation that could be prevented. Like for example, I can potentially be saved now if I change my mind. <laughs> Anyway, do you guys want to see what I got for dinner? Do you want to see what I got for dinner? Do you want to see what I got for dinner? Why are you so little? Can you guys see him? <laughs> He's like struggling down here. Um, so I went to Zoe's kitchen. Zoe's kitchen 
Zoe's Kitchen is my backup when I don't want to drive for platias, which is my favorite Greek food. So this is like Americanized Mediterranean food. So it kind of, it kind of fills the void or um, say she eats the craving, but just, just kind of. So that's what I was telling you guys. It kind of seems like maybe they forgot something in here. Let's hope it's all in the box. Maybe. Oh, it is. Awesome. Okay, you guys. This is why I can't be left alone to my own devices. Um, because I get too much food and then I actually eat it all. I got this, which is the salad and hummus um, with half pita, half cucumbers. Um, it's just a Greek salad and some hummus. And then I also got this. This is, again, why I can't be left alone. I got, um, this is a chicken and orzo soup. And then just some chicken kebab but I don't know what they did here. Um, it's under there somewhere. It's rice, some grilled veggies, um, some chicken there, and some Wesley. Do you want some chicken? Hmm? You looking at me because you want some chicken? Anyway, I'm gonna sit here by myself on the floor of my living room, which I hardly ever hang out with anymore, and I'm just gonna enjoy some nice and peace and quiet, enjoy my meal, try not to eat all of it, cuddle my pups, and contemplate in the many ways that that man could have potentially saved me. <laughs> hey you guys, happy Saturday, it's 10 o'clock. Guess where I'm going looking this fabulous. I get to go to Costco and I was super excited because I was like, yeah, it's still early. They just opened. It's going to be super awesome and efficient. And then Parker was like, it's Labor Day weekend. And I was like, dang it. Now I got to fight the crowds, but it's okay. I can do this. Got my security guard with me. Um, so we're going to go to Costco. We're going to go to Target. Have you guys ever gone to the... <laughs> He knows he has to get put in the crate, so he's like, not. <laughs> he's not about that life. Stop! It's like wrestling a pig! Double, 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 babe. Like trying to catch a chicken. Ben! Come here. Come here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. My hand off. <laughs> we'll come and get you out. It's just for a little bit, an hour. You'll be fine. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> Avoiding eye contact. He's giving you the the corner, like the evil eye corner stare. <laughs> yeah, so have you guys ever gotten to the point in your adult life where um, you don't have anything to eat in your, in your refrigerator? Because that may or may not be the situation. And I'm not, you know, I'm, st I'm still learning. I'm still learning to be a grown-up and a bonus mom because... We used to have like the week on week off where we have kids and we don't have kids. And so if we ran out of groceries, it wasn't a big deal. Now it's, it's kind of a big deal because I have to provide nourishment. <laughs> so luckily, bonus baby one and two are still sleeping and we can sneak out of the house and actually get them some food to consume. I mean, there's food in the pantry, okay? But um, there's like no fruit, there's, there's milk. Don't report me, you guys. Anyway, I want to show you guys my outfit of the day. It's pretty extravagant. Uh, you've seen it. It's uh, it, it just matches perfectly with my mini backpack. Yeah, you heard that right. Uh, you ready? All right, y'all. My perfect tee from JCPenney. This is, uh, these are my jeans from Levi's, which I also got at JCPenney. These are like the perfect dupe for this pair of jeans that I have that was $200. It's literally the exact same pair and they were less than half the price. And then I have my Sam Edelman booties. I wait anxiously for it to be fall so that I could whip these out and have literally no excuse why I can't wear them. I just love them so much. And because it rained yesterday or the day before, I don't remember, it rained a lot. The weather actually cooled down to like about 90, so it's totally justifiable. I look so strange without makeup on. I've been wearing makeup every single day for like the last week. So looking at my face like this, I'm like, Anyway, let me show you guys my mini backpack. Yes, I said mini backpack. Here we go. There you go. It's part of my uh, JCPenney collab. Isn't that cute? I love it. I love the size. The pocket in the front is the perfect size for like my keys and my phone. It is the best thing. It's probably one of my favorite things in the collection. No, I'm lying. Everything is my favorite in the collection. The gold hoops, the t-shirt, the jeans, the backpack, uh, those really big statement earrings that I was wearing yesterday. I'm getting squirrely. Parker's probably in the car waiting for me. Wondering where my efficiency went. Let's go.
you guys. About 2.30. We are here to officially close down, end, to officially end, no. To officially officiate, no. It's the end of an era, is what I'm trying to say. We're at Parker's house. It's been leased and we have to remove some cameras. He used to have like security system uh, around his house and we're here to take them down and then cancel all the utilities on uh, Tuesday, because Monday's Labor Day. It's bittersweet. Like, I never lived here, but I'm like, man, this is kind of sad, right? Anyway, that's the current state of our life. You guys want to see? You want to see my man with his tools? Not that tool perverts. Are you sad? No. <laughs> you didn't even think about it. I'm happy. It's time to cut the cord. And... It's gonna feel good. It is gonna feel good. It's coming to an end. It's been a long process and a journey. It's kind of exciting coming to the end. Do you want to feel good later? Yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. Look at that booty shaker. <laughs> hmm. Easy enough. Did you do the anchors into the grout? Yep. Right into the brick. Oh, into the brick. Uh -huh. I did mine into the grout. Either way it works. I don't think I know how to drill into brick. Well, but then I didn't have a hammer drill, so that might help. Fine, I guess I'll help. Hold, please. Hey, hey you guys. So it's almost four o'clock. You have to let me know in the comment section below if you are part of a family that needs to eat dinner at like three o'clock, because <laughs> that's kind of us. And so we got home from Parker's house and we were famished. And uh, we did a little spread. Do you guys want to see? All right, so Parker cooked up some patties on his cast iron skillet. And then we have some burger toppings here. I cut up a watermelon, which surprisingly was very good. I was a little skeptical because they felt a little skeevy. Um, this family eats about a jar of pickles a week. And by family, I mean me. Um, we have some, if you guys haven't tried these buns, they're from Pepperidge Farms, I believe. Let me show you guys the wrapper. Um, yeah, they're the golden potato hamburger buns. These taste just like Shake Shack buns, which is why we bought them today. And then I roasted some sweet potatoes. If you guys are um, snackers like I am or grazers, it's cool to have access to healthier snacks. Sweet potatoes, a super food, it's very good for you. And so what I like to do is I'll take two or three really large sweet potatoes and I'll roast them in the oven at 400 degrees. Um, and depending on my mood, I'll put salt and pepper or I'll do salt, pepper, and a little bit of cinnamon. Um, and they taste good cold. They taste great uh, microwave. They taste great right out of the oven. I like to eat them as a side dish when I first make them and then I'll put them in the fridge and throughout the day I'll just eat them straight out of the container. They're very, very good. So anyway, that's the state of my life. That's the state of affairs here at Coffee Break Headquarters. Um, I think it's gonna be a pretty chill day today. Do we have anything else to do today? Nothing, <clears throat> maybe a nap. Maybe a nap, it's too late, it's four o'clock. Oh. A, a nap that envelops into tomorrow. We should um, find something to movie, rent a movie. Ice cream. Popcorn, ice cream. Oh, the smirk. Here at the house? Yeah. Smurfs? There's a Smurfs movie? I did not authorize the Thuppo to be in a movie. Just saying. <laughs> hey, you guys. Happy Tuesday. What? All right, so here's the scoop. Um, Sunday was a horrible day. <laughs> you know when you have one of those days that, like, marks history where you're like, mm, this is a day I'm going to have a lot of trouble forgetting. That was my Sunday. Um, and then yesterday was Labor Day, so we had all four kids at home, and it was so nice. You guys literally all day all we did was play board games we watched one movie um because i needed a break from from all the games um and we cooked at home like every meal we cooked at home and it, that's something that we hardly ever do like all three meals we cook them at home when all four kids are present so it's it just we just kind of dropped off the radar on uh, saturday night um, I feel like the energy, the whole vibe of this weekend was just off for me, you know? Um, I know it sounds a little, um, kitschy to say or weird, but I know that when I'm in a bad, like, frame of mind or if I have a bad attitude, um, I attract a lot more negativity, um, or things that normally wouldn't bother me, bother me a lot more. And I've always been very like, 
I don't even know the word without making it sound weird, but I've always been very connected to what's going on around me when it comes to like feelings and energy and stuff that's going on. And oftentimes I'll feel just weird, 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 or I'll feel like I'm getting sick. I'll feel like I'm getting sick. And then I'll get a call that something happened back home or that, you know, some news or whatever. So um, for the last few days this week, I was just like, I don't know, I was just in a negative place. Um, and then Friday with the whole football game, marching band misunderstanding, it just really hurt my feelings and I was so upset about it. Um, I really have to say though, um, shout out to my fiance, um, Parker, because um, we're both really good at emptying our purse um, or talking about things that bother us and once we talk about it like it's done it's done like it's full on done so I could be mad for two or three days but if we talk about it it's done everyone's in a good place in a happy mood it's done it's squashed it's it's resolved um, so yeah it was it was a little confusing because, you know, I was I was under the impression something specifically something specific was gonna happen and then I was left out of the loop and I just it just it doesn't feel nice to not be included in things when you're already really trying to create um, like new families, you know? So we're very cognizant that my sons have a family with their father and then they have a family when they come home to me but then they also have that family with their bonus dad and bonus sisters you know so the dynamic is very confusing and it's a little stressful but we try our best to really um, make things smooth and make everyone feel like a part of everything and so when something like that happens where it's very um, obvious that one person was excluded it just it's hard to not get your feelings hurt so anyway we we figured that out on Friday we squashed it we got over it on Saturday it was done we moved on um, and then uh, Sunday um, luckily Sunday was gonna be like a low-key day um, bonus baby senior wanted to go to the mall with her friends um, Parker and I have been wanting to get a new bigger fridge for our kitchen um, so we had this plan laid out on what we wanted to do on Sunday, um, but you know, I just, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. Something was really bothering me, really bothering me since like Thursday. And so I'm in the middle of the shower, full shampoo in my hair, and my father calls me. <laughs> what? <laughs> You guys, I don't know if you guys have a parent, but like a parent that only calls you for like specific reasons. And when my dad calls me, it's only for two reasons. And so the phone rings and I'm like, oh, why do I have to be knee deep in like shampoo suds, right? I say, hey, let me call you back in 10 minutes. I'm in the shower. Cool. So I call him back and of course I get really bad news. And it's one of those, it's one of, it's, it's that type of news where the bad news isn't really what like crushes your soul it's the implications of that bad news or how it was handled and you guys know I'm pretty private with certain things in my life and as transparent as I've been with the dynamic of the relationship with my parents um, there's still some sort of I don't know filter or or line that I need to draw in the sand where I don't necessarily overshare although my middle name is oversharing anyway um, it was more of how everything was handled, you know? And I don't know if you guys have, this is probably one of my top three most personal, personal details of, of me as a person, of who I am, but my dark place is my closet. And that's where I go when I need to, when I just can't anymore, when I can't, I can't, do my life. I want to disconnect. It's like sensory deprivation almost, but it's really because I can't be a mom. I can't be a, a fiance. I can't be a dog parent. I just can't function. I am at rock bottom. If you ever find me in my closet, <laughs> it's because I'm at rock bottom. And that for me was Sunday. Um, I asked Parker to fix a door in the house and um, he was fixing the door when I took a shower. I got the call from my dad. I spoke to him and the next thing I knew he found me in my closet just bawling like a freaking psycho. <laughs> You know, crying is very cathartic. And if you're one of those people that swallows your tears, don't, because then you get a headache. I'm a pro at that too. Anyway, I don't know why I'm sharing all of this with you. I think it's part, partly because I left you hanging on the vlog, partly because 
it's customary for me to share these types of things with you guys. Um, but I think ultimately because after this Sunday, I just had probably the most clear, transparent, most obvious realization that no matter what I do, no matter what I accomplish, no matter how many positive choices I make in my life and how successful I become and how happy I am and how much I strive to live in God's image and be a good person, there's always going to be someone that focuses on what you're incapable of doing, focuses on what you're not worthy of, focuses on why they don't like you. And so ultimately, at the end of the day, you have to realize that no matter what you do, some people just won't like you. <laughs> and it's funny because I actually got a comment on, um, well, several comments on my video that I posted on Saturday. I posted a snack um, video with my best friend, Sam. And the reason that I uh, monitor my comments is because, and I've talked about this before, but in case any of you um, missed it, um, the reason I monitor my comments is because if you leave up one negative comment, um, they catch fire. And so it gives other people the confidence to chime in and then it becomes a slew of negative comments. So I see often a lot of really, really big YouTube channels, they'll get one negative comment and then it just turns into like a bashing session. I don't expect a massive channel to monitor their comments because um, it's an impossible task. My channel's still small. I can still do it myself. But if I were to ever be blessed with the success of some of these channels, I would absolutely, most certainly, beyond a shadow of a doubt, hire someone on my payroll to monitor my comments because there is nothing worse than giving space and a forum to people that have very poor control over their power in language. Very poor grace when it comes to respecting other humans. You know, people that have absolutely no filter, no um, understanding. Um, just to give you guys some, I don't know, context. So the most common, common, common um, comments that I get about myself when it comes to people that don't like me or accept me being on you know, YouTube is one that I'm an alcoholic and I'm an alcoholic because of my behavior. So there's this big thing about how Danny's an alcoholic. The other thing that I get is that I resent my children and that one really bothers me because I feel like it's an attempt to filter me. Um, but I'm, ne I'm not going to stop. I don't resent my children. In fact, I would give both kidneys to my children, even my bonus children, but I am gonna be the first mom, the first woman to tell you, being a mom sucks sometimes, being a mom is hard, being a mom is lonely, and my kids drive me crazy. And I will say it, and I will scream it from the mountaintops, and I will never be filtered when I say that being a mom is really hard. It's like doing the hardest job on the planet for free. And it's it's unfair to say that I resent my children because you see none of of my interaction with my children. If there is ever a far-fetched comment that I get, it would be anything about my kids because you're literally just getting what you hear from my own mouth. <laughs> So clearly I've done a great job at giving you guys perspective on how I feel about my kids. <laughs> anyway, so that's the second. The third is that the only reason I'm always sick is because I'm obsessed with being skinny. And that for me makes me laugh because it's like, you're jealous. <laughs> you're jealous that I can go to In-N-Out and eat two cheeseburgers, fries, a large sweet tea and a vanilla shake and not gain weight. But I've always been skinny. In fact, the number one reason why I got bullied when I was little was 
because I was Mexican and didn't speak English and because I was skinny. So, you know, like those, those are things that don't really bother me, the being skinny. And so it's like, yeah, you've driven yourself to illness because you're so obsessed with being skinny. And so I'll get this slew of comments, which I could totally imagine. Like this is a group of girls that are on a WhatsApp group and they're like, yeah, let's go bombard her with comments and links to like gossip blogs and stuff like that, which years ago stopped bothering me. But again, I like to go in and clean it because I feel like a lot of you guys feel this strong compulsion to want to stand up for me and will take the bait, you know, and will participate in, in trying to defend me. And as much as I love it and appreciate it, these people ain't worth your time. You know, these people don't love themselves. They're never going to love me. <laughs> don't try to convince them to like me like you like me because they don't even like themselves. And so it's something that you're just going to fail miserably at because you can't, you can't remove hate from people's heart. They have to be ready to let it go. And um, anyway, I, it was just a hard, it was a hard combination of, of events and things happening. Um, let me park here. I'm actually meeting um, one of my best friends, Nusha, for breakfast because her birthday was last week. And last uh, year, I took her to True Food to have lunch with a few of my girlfriends. Today, I'm taking her to breakfast. I brought her gift. Oh, I think I brought her gift. Yes, I have her gift. Um, but I wanted to have a conclusion or some sort of end to this vlog um, where I just make it a really big point um, to say... It doesn't matter what you do, how much you do, how much you give, how pleasant you are, how much you donate, how helpful you are, how humble you are, how graceful you are. It doesn't matter how good of a person you are. There is always going to be people that make you question that. and. I don't think you ever get to a point in your life where you can wholeheartedly and fully say, I don't care what people think about me. Because ultimately, when, when those people are your friends, when those people are your family, when those people are people that should be in your circle or that should be rooting for you, it's a really hard concept to want to accept, to be okay with accepting. And so, I think what gives me comfort on my lowest days, like these last three days, is that God chose me. He created me, and if I was good enough for him, <laughs> guess what? You're good enough for this world, and you're good enough to be here, and you're good enough to have a voice, and you're good enough to participate, and you're good enough to be loved. And it's in my almost 35 years of life that I struggle with choosing the wrong people to accept me. You know, I've always, always dealt with bullies. I've always dealt with people that don't believe in me. And that just slides off of me now. But it's a hard concept when it's people that you really want to like you, you know, and you, and you bend over backwards to say, just, can you just like me? Can you just love me a little bit? You know? And there's just some people that you're never going to be good enough for, and that's okay. So um, I'm hoping this little girl time that I have with Nusha um, really just centers me back up because it's such a big week, you guys. Um, on Friday, my collection with JCPenney launches, the local look. I'm actually wearing an outfit from uh, my pics today. Um, and then September 14th is my meetup. So if you guys are in Dallas, um, September 14th from one to four, all the details will be listed in the description box below. I'll also put a little banner up here. Um, I have to really remind myself to count my blessings, you know, because I'll lose count. Um, and if I start focusing on on the things I don't have and the things that I wish I had, the list would be really short and it's not that exciting. You know, count your blessings. I can guarantee you'll lose count. You'll lose count because um, maybe your kids are healthy, maybe you're in a happy relationship, maybe you have the job you've always dreamt of. But you guys, just when I was at the peak of my amazing motivational speech, 
my camera overheated. So here I am, almost late to my breakfast date with one of my besties. Um, focus, focus, just do it as an exercise. And I do this um, when I'm feeling really anxious, um, when I feel like things aren't going my way. Um, I just will start just listing out loud, as crazy as it sounds, I will start listing all of the good things that are happening. So I'm not like, oh, you know, I wish I didn't get troll comments, or I wish more, more subscribers liked me, or, you know, I wish my mom loved me more than she does, or whatever. You know, instead of focusing on those three, four little stupid things that just really cut your heart, Count all the good things. Literally out loud, you guys. Sit in front of a mirror while you're brushing your teeth. Count it in your head. My children are funny and they're healthy and they're brilliant. I have a fiance that loves me and will bend over backwards at my every whim. I have two beautiful, intelligent, responsible bonus daughters that accept me for who I am and respect me as a you know parent figure. I have a circle, I have a tribe of girlfriends that remind me every day how powerful and independent and just inspiring women can be. And I promise you, you'll go from focusing on three bad things and you will lose count on all the amazing great things that are in your life and instantly your mood will be in a different, because you're, you're, you're counting all these good things so there is no other way to end up than being in a positive headspace. And so, um, Parker will frequently ask me why I overshare with you guys. It doesn't bother him, but he really questions if I'm being too vulnerable and putting myself at risk. And I always tell him, if what I say, if my oversharing helps one person out of 400,000, just one, I've done my job. Just one. If you know, 40,000 of you think I overshare and unsubscribe and it's too vulnerable and it's too dramatic and it's just way too emotional, like it's not that serious, that's fine. But if it helps one person, if one person is having a super <laughs> weekend like I did and whatever three words I share with you guys just helps you, changes your mood or puts you in a different place, I've done my job. And so, um, I feel lucky to have you guys and to have this platform to really just share with you guys and remind you that uh, we all have a lot of struggles and we all have similar struggles, very different struggles, but we're all human and ultimately we all want stability, we all want peace of mind, and we all want to be loved. And so um, if you may not be able to relate to me because I'm a mom, if you may not be able to relate to me because I'm divorced or I'm Mexican or I'm on YouTube, you can relate to me because we're human. Um, and we all look for the same things in life, you know, love and acceptance. So I'm here to say that maybe you're looking in the wrong place. If you don't feel love and accepted, maybe you're looking in the wrong place. I know I have for years. <laughs> anyway, you guys, big week for us, huge week. When you guys see this vlog, the JCPenney collection has launched. I'll leave a link in the description box below just so you guys can peruse and maybe you'll like something. Chambray shirts, earrings, pants, I mean, there's like 60 items in this collection. I don't know why it looks so dark, you guys. Um, there's like 60 items in this collection. I'll leave a link in the description box below. And if you guys are in Dallas, I really, really, really would love to meet you and squeeze you and love on you and just put a face to the name. Um, I love these local events because um, Allison, Nusha, Veto, Paola, all of my really great girlfriends I met through these types of events. So um, maybe I'm looking to add a friend to the group. Anyway, I love you guys so, so much. I hope to meet so many of you. All of the stuff that you saw on this vlog will be listed and linked in the description box below. But other than that, I think that's it. I can't say this enough, but I love you guys so much. And you know what to do. If you found this video useful, entertaining, and learned something, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye guys.